Good morning, Ram Nation. We are back with another edition of DNVR Rams Live. I, of course, am Justin Michael, and we are talking about a 17-point loss to number 19 Air Force on a cold, snowy night up in Fort Collins. For the sake of transparency, I do want to tell you guys I had to cover this game remotely. I just don't have a vehicle that can make that kind of commute, you know, 140 miles round trip in that kind of storm. It was insane. Typical Colorado last week, you know, you're wearing sunscreen, sweating your butt off in 80 degree weather. And now we get, you know, a half foot plus of wet, sloppy snow. (laughs) Um, As far as my thoughts on this one, it it felt fairly predictable. I mean, this is just such a well-disciplined Air Force team. I have so much respect for Troy Calhoun as a head coach, I think. Really for, I mean, the, the last decade plus Air Force has been the staple college football program in this state. And he owns CSU, man. He absolutely owns CSU. I think that's 14 of 16 since he took that job. I mean, it's just insane that they've been able to sustain this, especially after losing so many of those key contributors from last year's run. The thing is, is they're not just good because they run a quirky option scheme or something like that. It's not because they play cute football like that's legitimately a a good football team on both sides i mean in the trenches they're just so solid you see in that front seven the the speed and strength that they have it's a good team and it it was definitely a (laughs) great comment from aaron harris how long until calhoun can collect his federal employee retirement package i won't miss him i don't think any fans around the state outside of air force supporters are going to miss calhoun when he's gone because he just He continues to kick CU and CSU's butt. I understand why that program get more coverage, why they don't get talked about locally. It's just because they don't have a huge local contingent as far as their fan base goes. Obviously, their student base, they're coming from all over the country. It's a very unique recruiting base. A lot of those guys aren't sticking around locally and, you know, cheering on the the team like you are in, in Fort Collins and Boulder, et cetera. But I mean, all this team does is win. And now they're in the, the driver's seat for the Mountain West Championship as long as they don't have the, the typical Air Force slip up, which seems to happen just about every year. But I mean, at this point, they're also, you know, in the driver's seat for a, a, for a Fiesta Bowl appearance, which would be really cool. Go up against a team like Oregon, maybe. I've seen that as, as far as a lot of the bowl projections go. But as far as uh, CSU Air Force goes, like I said, it, it felt like, a predictable result. It felt like a very typical Air Force game. I mean, really going to those those first series of the night, you go for it on fourth and one, going under center. They went under center a couple times early on. I think they had only done that twice coming into the game. They tried to go for the QB sneak under with BFN. Don't get it. Not a great spot, but they really didn't gain a lot of traction. I'm, I'm not sure he did get it. You give Air Force the short field. They go right down and put points on the board, including, you know, when they converted on their fourth and one. So it was just kind of a a game of execution in this one. And Air Force did what they always do. I will say, I feel like it was closer than the 17 point final score may indicate. That's very typical in these games. It's usually pretty back and forth for a while. Obviously, a tie game at halftime. And then Air Force pulls away in the second half. And we'll get into a lot of the, the, key aspects of this game. Obviously, I'll highlight the individuals. We'll do our our typical routine here. But big picture, I just kind of wanted to talk about this one because I understand why people are frustrated continually losing to a conference rival, especially an in-state one. That stings. And that's one of the the many, you know, problems, losing streaks that was inherited by Jay Norvell. I will say going back to like that he has embraced that. I don't know if you guys saw recently, but Sean Payton, the Broncos coach, got asked about you know some of the losing streaks within the division. I, I believe it was 
about the the Kansas City losing streak specifically, and he basically got really defensive and was like, you know, those weren't my teams. I wasn't a part of that, which is true. But that's part of the, the responsibility of being a head coach is you inherit that responsibility of turning it around and turning around, you know, your performance in this Air Force series is definitely something that CSU is going to have to do. Like I said, I, I feel like it was a competitive game closer than the 17 point score may show. But obviously, you got really manhandled in that second half. And they're the number 19 team in the country for a reason. They're a really talented squad. Again, you know, I don't want to get too dramatic, but I also don't want to, you know, completely brush over it as well. But I will say, given the conditions, given the fact that the Rams were shorthanded, you know, they lost a lot of key contributors in this game. Tory Horton came in, dinged up. He just got obliterated in the open field. We didn't see him again after that in that second half. I can't bear it. went down. Chiggy went down at one point. I think Ron Harge took a shot. I mean, you, you hope that all these guys are okay. Cause if they're not, it, it could be pretty rough going into the match, but I don't know. I just, it, it felt very, very predictable. Like it felt like this was the outcome that should have happened when you were going against a number, you know, 19 team that plays as disciplined as air force does. that has as much talent as they do on both sides of the ball. I actually thought for the most part, the defense was pretty solid. I mean, they did give up 259 rushing yards on 56 carries, which amounts to 4.6 yards per carry. But Michelle early on in that third quarter did bust a 53 yard uh, run on the fullback dive. That was something that CSU actually handled pretty well in this one. A lot of the time air force, they'll just try and gash you up the middle repeatedly. If they can do that, they'll take it all night. Last year, it was a huge problem. This year, they handled it pretty well outside of this one big run. And it, it did kind of inflate the stats a little bit. You know, if you take away that that 53-yard run, they averaged 3.7 yards per carry over their other 55 touches, which sample size. I felt like guys were disciplined. I like that they went to a 3-4. I think it was big that they, uh, you know, had a heavier front and it, it really paid a difference. I, I would like to see them do that against Wyoming as well. I just think physically against the, the run and offensive lines like that, it's huge. Some guys really came up big. We'll talk about that. Offensively, it was inconsistent. Um, <laughs> weather didn't do them any favors, obviously. I, I think BFN struggled to, to deal with the cold a little bit. In this one, he kept looking at his hands after some overthrows. I don't believe that was due to injury. It was obviously really, really tough uh, conditions to throw the ball. There were some instances where he just kind of skied it. And I feel like if he would have been able to put a little bit more touch on those, if the conditions were a little bit more opti optimal, probably end up being completions. One in particular that comes to mind, he had a chance to hit Holker for what should have been a touchdown, just sailed it a little bit. But yeah, I mean, it, it was just a tough night, tough night, cold. The, the snow did not do any favors. Uh, I thank you to everybody in the comment section. Keep it up. Uh, we will get to some of these in the third segment as well. Uh, if you have questions, you know, again, keep them coming. We'll get to some of those in the, the third segment. We'll go back to it. Real quick, I do want to shout out our friends over at Game Time. Buying tickets should not be stressful. It should not be a process that makes you want to rip your hair out. With Game Time, they allow you to have all the convenience while, frankly, still procrastinating. They offer deals right up to game time, including an hour uh, into the matchup. So if you're running late, you know, baseball is a great example of this. If, you know, maybe it's like the second or third inning, you can get a great deal at the last minute. Get in there. They allow you to see the view from your seat before you buy. So you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. And the best part about game time is they just they take all those crappy fees out of the process. There's so many ticket services these days where it shows one price and then you go to pay and it adds on like 45 different fees. The price that you see, game time with what you see is what you get. Find exclusive flash deals with game time. Make sure you download that app. Get $20 off your first purchase when you use the code DNVR. Again, create an account, redeem the code DNVR for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. I also want to shout out Hero Bread. It's that time of year, guys. You got to start being conscientious of you know, what you're consuming. You don't necessarily have to, you know, be on a diet or anything like that. I, I certainly don't. But, you know, you do want to make sure you're eating high quality products, you know, products that aren't just absolutely terrible for you. And what's great about Hero is it's a low carb option that is, uh, 
It works for basically all dietary constraints. It has all the taste and flavor and the texture. That's a big thing for me. You know, texture with bread is huge, but it, it tastes like you're eating just a normal bread and it's so much better for you. Right now, Hero Bread is offering the DNVR fam 10% off their first order. Just go to hero.co, use our code DNVR to save on Hero Bread today. That's H E R O.co to save 10% today. All right. Um, <laughs> Appreciate everybody in the comment section. You guys are great. If you give me a thumbs up, I would appreciate that as well. Uh, the comments are great. Again, we'll get to some of these in that third segment. Keep them coming. Uh, we're highlighting some of those on the back end here. I felt like the turning point in this game was the snowball incident. And I want to talk about it because it's one of those things where you'll see some really old man takes like, oh my God, that was the the difference between the game. It wasn't. It was an incident that in the moment hurt the team. I mean, it turns a nine yard run into basically a 24 yard gain. That's a quarter of their first drive right off the bat with how efficient air force is. You can't afford to be, you know, just giving them free yardage like that. That said it's college students having fun. It, it's, you know, obviously insane conditions out there. So many people complain about students not being engaged. They're having fun. It's snowballs. It's not the end of the world. I understand why they have to be uh, cautious of it, why they have to, to take it seriously. You don't want them to like throw ice on somebody or something like that. That could be very dangerous at some point, but I don't know. To, to penalize the team felt like a bit of an overreaction to me. I think they could have just had security move them back from the start. That would have ended it. I don't know. I, I But like I said, it, it was a big play in the moment. And really that's kind of when it, when it all went downhill from there, I mean, time of possession, when you look at it, Air Force finished with 35 minutes and a 58 seconds of possession, just under 36 minutes, Air or CSU a little bit over 24 minutes. In that second half, though, CSU had less than 10 minutes of total possession. And it's just really hard to win that way unless you're hitting like 70 yard bombs for scores every time. And that's the reason the time of possession was inflated. Obviously, that was not the case. In this one, you know, you get shut out in that second half. Air Force has it for 20 minutes and 37 seconds. They really established that run game as it went on. Uh, they finally started to break some runs along the edge, which they didn't do a ton of outside of that first uh, first scoring drive. They obviously broke that fullback dive for 53 yards, which was huge. Um, it, it, they just kind of they just kind of asserted their will as time went on. And my buddy, Andre Simone, who we have on the show every Thursday, he likes to use the boa constrictor analogy. And that's just kind of what they do slowly, but surely they're going to suffocate you. And air force, you know, reminded everyone why they've been on this win streak, why, you know, they continue to rack up wins and dominate the conference. Um, some of the other keys to the game, in my opinion, turnovers, you only had the one fumble, but the timing of it was really big. Um, I, you know, I'm not an expert, so I don't want to, you know, get up on my high horse or anything like that, but Braden, he's, you know, in the pocket, he kind of dropped the ball down, which makes it easier to strip. That is something that we have seen uh, him do a couple of times. And, you know, it, it has been an issue. There's just some things he needs to clean up mechanically as he goes on. He obviously has all the arm talent in the world. I love his mentality. I love his mindset. I think he's going to be a stud, but that was a big turnover. It hurt CSU. It translates to points. And when, you know, it, it kind of felt like CSU was in firm control there for a little bit in the second quarter, all of a sudden the game just flips wide open. Uh, along with that fumble, you have a couple of instances where you go for it on fourth down. You're not able to pick up any of them. You know, they end up with Air Force, you know, scoring the other way. I did see some people uh, commenting on Twitter going back and forth with my good buddy, Kevin Lytle of the Colorado in about CSU's decision to go for it uh, in that second half. I think it was the the third drive. Um, it's third and 16. You hit Ross Simmons on a comeback to set up fourth and seven. Then I believe it was Holker that he overthrew, but I could be wrong on that. I'll have to go back and rewatch it. But fourth and seven, obviously you turn it over after that Air Force, you know, very quickly. They CSU picks up a face mask and they run a trap for 11. Then a couple more runs, touchdown 30 to 13. It was basically game over after the Rams turned it over there. That said, Air Force, especially with the way they were starting to run the ball in that second half, I mean, you don't know how many possessions you're going to get. I think you have to be aggressive there. You have to 
at least be trying to attack back and you know put some of that pressure back on Air Force. As soon as they go up, that's what they're built to do is play from ahead, to milk that clock, to run the ball, to not take too many chances, especially in this type of weather. Unfortunately, though, the, the field position was just a major factor, and it, it wasn't because special Turner was great in this one. You know, again, it's just kind of the, the turnover on downs, getting stripped deep in your own territory. That's huge. You just you can't give those extra opportunities for Air Force because they're going to capitalize every single time. And you see that in the final stats. I mean, the red zone opportunities, Air Force had five of them. CSU had one. <laughs> that's not a recipe for success against a team like that. And really, like that's the difference in the game. Air Force possessed the ball that entire second half. They had a couple of key opportunities to put points on the board, which they took care of. Defensively, they got off the field. Obviously, not not being able to run the football was a problem for the Rams. Um, I'm not sure if Avery Morrow got dinged up again in practice, if it was just the conditions. I mean, it's going to be a process as he comes back from that MCL injury. Frankly, the fact that he was able to play in the UNLV game was surprising because based on everything I had heard over the, the weeks leading up to that was that it was probably going to be more like a, a November return. So, I mean kudos to him for being tough and gutting it out for that UNLV game. Hopefully they have him and Tori and all these guys back for Wyoming. Cause it's going to be huge, but this just feels like a game where it, it's pretty simple. You know, you don't have to have a, a crazy overreaction or anything like that. You don't need to get up here and, you know, pound the tables that they need to burn it down. Obviously losing to air force this many times in a row. I think that's seven straight is it's frustrating. I mean, you shouldn't be getting, manhandled the the way you do at times in this series but this was a, a competitive game they fought to the end and frankly i feel like the, the better team you know kind of asserted their will as as time went on and csu a, a young team a team that's got a lot of guys that are up and coming that's a that's a valuable learning experience playing in those condi conditions is something that not everybody on the roster is, is going to be used to i mean your quarterbacks from texas a lot of these skill guys are from california especially when you're dinged up, you know, we got some comments about Horton's ribs here, you know, taking hits like that in the open field. That's tough. If you're, you know, not used to, to playing in 20 degree weather with sideways snow and your hands cold and numb, and it's hard to grip the ball. I mean, this, this was a learning experience for BFN and he's going to be so good as time goes on. So I just want to make it clear. Like I'm not trying to pin this on him. Obviously he did get stripped, but he also made a perfect throw to justice Ross Simmons in that second quarter. Can't throw the ball any better than that. His deep ball is just gorgeous. Love that. Love that the Rams were aggressive in that instance and put some pressure on. Unfortunately, they weren't able to hit a ton more in the passing game, but the weather got worse as the night went on. So that that kind of makes sense, you know, and now you've got a short week to respond. It's all about that boot. Um, CSU's player of the game to me is newer Gatkuth. He had 15 total tackles, one and a half tackles for loss in this one. That him playing outside linebacker. Uh, I mentioned earlier that the Rams played more of a traditional 4-3 in this one. I loved that. I hope they do it again against Wyoming. I think just having more size in that box is is huge. And for a Rams team that's been kind of inconsistent with defending the run, I, I really liked the way they looked in that one. He's just got so much size and speed. He's able to cover a, a ton of ground. And you've got to credit those defensive backs and the guys on the edge for being really disciplined in this one as well. You know, Air Force, it, it takes one guy out of position for them to, to bust a big run outside of that 53 yard run. And it wasn't an instance where you got, you know, burned on the edge or somebody was out of position. It was just good blocking. The Rams were really disciplined. They tackled uh, as, a, as a team in this one, you know, a lot of gang tackling, not a lot of single solo tackles. I love to see that. I, I just, I really loved the effort from the defense in this one. Would have liked to have, you know, gotten a little bit more offensive execution. Given the circumstances, though, you're shorthanded. It's snowing sideways, freezing night. You're going against one of the best scoring defenses in the entire country. I mean, it's kind of going to happen. Like, I understand we want to win these games, but you also have to be realistic about the situation as well. Uh, some other individuals that are worth highlighting on CSU side, Braden Fowler, Nicolosi, again, he did miss some throws in this one. But I, I also feel like he gave them a chance. 28 to 45, 297 yards, one touchdown. Another game without a pick, which is huge. Um, absolutely huge for that offense. You know, did get stripped the one time. I felt like his decision-making, for the most part, 
was pretty good. There were a couple instances where he maybe tried to force it deep when the, the check down was there. And that's, again, that's another area where he can grow as a young quarterback, just kind of taking what the defense is giving you. I felt like he, that he did a really good job of that in the CU game, especially it's kind of like to see him get back to that at times, not always looking to, uh, you know, make the big play. I'd give a helmet sticker to justice Ross Simmons. He had eight catches, 128 yards, both led the team. Their only touchdown of the day, him and Lewis Brown continuing to, you know, have bigger and bigger roles in this offense is going to be so paramount. You know, you got to assume that Tory's likely NFL bound after this season. Maybe you get him back. I mean, you never know. He has, you know, mentioned on a, a couple of instances unpromptedly that he has that extra year of eligibility, but you're very likely going to be dependent on Lewis Brown and Justice Ross Simmons moving forward. So the fact that they continue to step up and, and make big plays is very encouraging for the offense. I would say the same thing uh, about Dylan Goffney, the SMU transfer. They really started to work him in the mix against UNLV. Had a couple more catches tonight. Um, you know, the passing game wasn't awesome. I think a lot of that was weather impacted, but a couple of these guys still ended up making some plays. Uh, Torrey Horton, five catches, 52 yards. Dallin Holker, five catches for 43 yards. Great comment as well. We got in the section here, excited for Ross next year as a four-star, if he can make an impact. We'll see. It's hard for true, true freshmen to get on the field. Um, frankly, the fact that the Rams don't have a ton of freshmen on the field is is encouraging this season. That was part of the problem last year. It was out of necessity and not because those guys were ready. But it is encouraging about the direction of the program. You're you know, recruiting some skilled guys that assumingly can come in over these next couple of years and kind of carry that lineage of wide receiver you. I think on the TV they said a pass catcher you because they were showing the tight ends now. It's not quite as clean as wide receiver you. It's just not. I, I like that a little bit better. And we can just have it extend, you know, to the tight ends by association in this offense. Uh, helmet stickers for the entire CSU starting defense. I, I just thought their effort was stellar in this one. I thought they were disciplined. I thought guys were flying to the ball. Uh, Chase Wilson had 11 tackles. Blackburn with eight. Howell with six. Sanchez with six. Mo with five. Kelly with five. Mitchell with five. It was just a really solid team effort. I mean, you've got, I, I don't want to try and count these in the moment, but I mean, you've got three more guys with five, a couple guys with four, three more guys with three. I mean, that's really solid team production uh, across the board. That front seven, especially the safeties coming down into the box. I loved what I saw from Howell and Blackburn. Blackburn didn't have a missed tackle on one of Air Force's runs. He also had a couple of plays where he came in and just destroyed the lead blocker so that, you know, somebody else was able to to come in and, and clean it up. It was just a lot of instances of guys doing their job, playing, you know, team oriented, responsible defense. And that's encouraging. I, I felt like the run defense was encouraging against UNLV. I thought it was really encouraging tonight against Air Force, despite what the, the final stats ended up being. I mean, they're a team that can put 400 on the ground very easily. They did catch them on a play action pass play where, you know, the Rams DBs just got caught peeking into the backfield. It happens. It just it happens against Air Force. They didn't get burned over the top repeatedly, which is, again, something that Air Force has done uh, pretty well here. Uh, but I just I, I think these guys are, are playing more like the defense that we expected coming in. It, it's not necessarily a top five defense or anything like that. As a whole, this season has been somewhat disappointing on that side, but they play hard. You know, they don't give in. And that's that's something that I would really credit this entire roster for. Uh, before we get to some of these questions we have here on the side, before we get to our final thoughts on this one, a um, couple more helmet stickers. I do want to shout out Patty Turner, three punts, average of 49 yards. He was awesome. Fans have been really hard on him at times this year, but when you look at net, I mean, he, he's he been really solid. Oh, we got a super chat from our guy, Evan Hostin Music. Um, we'll get to that now. Assuming Horton moves on to the NFL, how are you feeling about next year's success compared to this year? better, worse, the same. Um, obviously losing Horton would be massive. Like he's one of, if not the best NFL prospect in the entire conference. I think it's him or GNT, although Mo Camara has really made that conversation interesting, but you have your quarterback. You feel encouraged about the direction of the offensive line. 
I, I think the offense is going to be really good next year and not really skip a beat. You know, you maybe don't have an individual that puts up the same type of insane numbers that Tory is, is putting up right now. But the, the thing about this offense, and, and this was one, one of the things I highlighted at the beginning of the year, you really want it to be a collective effort. That was the problem last year. It was all on Tory this year. I think I said four or five guys will have at least 500 receiving yards. That's the, that's the dream. You know, you want Lewis Brown and justice and all these guys, you know, Jordan Ross coming in. You hope that all these guys impact, but as long as you've got three, four guys, you can trust. Maybe Holker comes back. Maybe he goes pro. We'll see, you know, Vince Brown, you hope he can develop, you need an option to attack up the middle. That was another thing that was, that was missing this past season. But overall, I feel pretty good about the direction of this offense, especially because Norvell's track record is, is really spot on. And, this staff, especially Chad Savage and, and some of these guys, I really trust their eye and they have uh, just great recruiting access out in Southern California, especially. So I'm very, very intrigued about the direction. And I think the offense is going to be fine, even when Tori inevitably moves on to play on Sundays because, God, he's a baller. Uh, helmet sticker for Jordan Noyes as well. <laughs> almost, almost named him the player of the game for the second straight week, but to drill. 40 yarder and a 49 yarder in that in that weather is just something and for the first time in a long time probably a decade i feel so good about csu and their kicking position and in college football that's a huge strength and i genuinely think at some point over these next couple of weeks the rams are going to win so that <laughs> They're going to win a game because of noise. Sorry, I got caught reading a, a comment here from my guy, Aaron Harris. Do we need a GoFundMe to get you a proper CRV to make it up to Colorado for these kinds of uh, conditions? Hey, it couldn't hurt, man. Driving a, a little Barbie car, a little Kia, which <laughs> it's, in a, it's a superior machine. If you get that reference, you're a real one. Um, yeah, driving the Kia is not optimal, not optimal in these conditions. But I've got good news, folks, and that is that uh, in the near future, I'll be moving back up to Fort Collins. Commute's killing me. I want to stay in that community. It'll be much easier on, on nights like last night when the the weather goes crazy. Um, before we keep it going with some final thoughts, get to a couple more of your questions and comments. I want to shout out Breckenridge Brewery. You guys know we love Breckenridge Brewery at DNVR. It's because they've got a beer for any occasion. They've been doing it for 33 years. It all comes down to their love and passion for making good beer. I'm a big Mountain Beach Sour guy, also big Avalanche Amber Ale guy. It's going to be real cold today. Broncos probably going to get murdered by the Chiefs. Numb it down a little bit with some Breck brews. Just have two or three. Maybe I just fall asleep and have a nice little cozy afternoon on a snowy Sunday. day. Uh, but I, I really cannot speak enough good things about Breckenridge Brewery. The farmhouse in Littleton is sick. Check out the Breck Brewer locator at breckbrew.com to find a brew near you. I just want to shout out Saturday Neon. Saturday Neon is a local company. They make officially licensed collegiate logo LED neon signs that are made with high quality materials that are backed by a two-year warranty. They're shipped with everything you need to mount, power, and dim. So every sign is easy to install and operate. They're officially licensed for 19 select schools, including CSU, Go Rams, CU, Arizona, Alabama, Wisconsin, Auburn, and many others. Great for offices, man caves, dorm rooms. Maybe you have a newborn and they need a nightlight. Get them a Saturday Neon. Go Big Daddy style. You know, just put it right on the wall. Go to SaturdayNeon.com. Use the code DNVR for 10% off your order today. Free shipping for orders over $200. All right, let's uh, let's wrap it up here. Get some final thoughts. I'll record again after I get a chance to rewatch this Air Force game as I typically do. Shout out to everybody that has tuned in this morning. Uh, much love to my guy, Tim, in the section. Matt, all of you, Aaron, I appreciate you. Um, if you've got more questions, keep them coming. We can get to them as we go on. Um, I will say that Air Force just does a, a great job of suffocating you. They they cut the amount of possessions that you get in half on average. When they go up, they pound it down your throat. And it, it just it played out so predictably. I know that's frustrating, but it just did. You know, when you're only tied at halftime. You feel good about what you've done, but you know that with Air Force getting the ball in that second half, it puts so much pressure on you. They go down the score if you don't respond immediately. A lot of the times, that's the game. You could maybe make the argument that 
CSU should have deferred to start the game just to have that extra possession in the second half. That said, that can backfire too because Air Force can just start the game off with, you know, like a 12 minute drive where they pound it down your throat and then, you know, takes all the energy out of the stadium. It, it, it just is a tough spot and they're, they really are so well coached. You're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't against a team like Air Force. You can't let this loss be something that, spirals you know into a losing streak there's still so much to play for over this final month i think wyoming is a very winnable game that's a really talented defense and i want to give them all the respect that they deserve i think peasley's played a little over his head at times this season and i feel like against wyoming this after or against boise state this afternoon you kind of saw some of those deficiencies they have as a passing offense play out if you play like you played against unlv and Air Force defensively these past two weeks, you're going to have a shot. You just need a little bit more on that offensive end. They need to find some consistency, which is something that has been an issue for them all season long. But clearly they have talent. Clearly they're improved. And this is a team that just does not have any quit in them. And for so long, this was a program that just got, they didn't just lose. They got bullied. They got their asses kicked in these games. Air Force. You know, Wyoming, CU, Boise State, all of those matchups really going back for five, six year stretch. There were very few games where you could even feel like remotely proud about the effort that was put forth. And I just don't think that's the case anymore. I think this is a group that plays for one another. I I do think that the, the inconsistencies are frustrating. I know that it's part of the process. It doesn't mean that it's any, you know, less annoying. But I do think they're really close to turning a corner here. And I think if you could go into Laramie and then come away with a a big win, that would be huge. It would really, you know, just generate some excitement and confidence moving forward because the Rams should be favored in those final three. Even if you do lose to Wyoming, you're still going to have an opportunity to reach a bowl game as long as you take care of business in the games that you should. But I I just want to see this team continue to fight. Hopefully (laughs) they can, you know, find a little bit more rhythm offensively. I think getting healthy would be, a really big part of that, just you know, not having to shuffle in different backs and receivers and the in-game injuries have, have definitely been an issue at times for CSU. It's encouraging that the weather, at least now, knock on wood, looks pretty good for Laramie on Friday night. But I, I just think this team is close. And I know that losing to Air Force, again, it's a drag, but this is what they do. And they really are a top 20 team uh, for a reason. So again, I appreciate all of you guys in the comment section here, you're going to make me blush. Let's get to this question from uh, Bawana Beast. Any guys get some snaps that may be given more playing time after this matchup? Yeah, I think on the defensive side, um, you, you can look in the secondary, especially um, whether it's Dom Jones, who's at times been a starter, kind of at times been a rotational guy in the DB. I thought he played really well, especially with, you know, Chiggy's situation. We'll kind of have to see there. Uh, Marshawn Oxley at defensive end. He actually started last week with newer Goutkuth out, but he he's another guy that I think is going to continue to play a lot. A lot of these freshmen, um, I, I'd like to see a little bit more of uh, Hidetora Hanada. He made his debut, the sumo champ out of Japan. He had three total tackles in this one, and there's a really cool picture from Kevin Lytle on Twitter well, well over an hour after the game. Hanada just out there in the snow putting in work by himself. Uh, really seems like he is just an awesome dude. I think it's such a fun story. And I think he he has potential in that interior. It's been hard to get on the field because they have so much talent in front of him. But I think he's a guy, particularly in you know third and fourth and short and goal line situations that could be impactful for this team. Uh, let's get to this question here. How do we fix our third quarter efficiency? We come out flat too many games this year. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know, man. This team's been all over the place. It seems like they either start hot and then dramatically cool off, or they start slow and then pick it up as it goes on. It tends to be in the fourth and not the third. So I do uh, understand what you're talking about there. Having success on first and second down, I think that's the biggest key. You know, there are a lot of these times it feels like the Rams come out, especially in that third quarter, you try and run the ball doesn't go for much, then maybe you have an incompletion and all of a sudden it's third and eight and against a team like Air Force or even UNLV, who again is going to run the football a lot, keep the pressure on you by 
running that clock, you know, they just, they got to be a little bit more efficient and that's going to come with experience as your young quarterback develops. I think getting a healthy Avery Morrow and having a one, two punch in the backfield would be huge. Van shield plays hard. That dude, you know, busts his tail, but you do need a little bit more speed in the backfield. So whether it's, you know, Morrow or Damian Henderson or whoever it ends up being, I, I think you need just a little bit more in that run game. It does feel like the O-line is getting more traction at times, not necessarily for four quarters, but it all just comes down to consistency for this team because they pop at times. They just haven't been able to uh, to keep it going um, consistently. Let's see here. I think we had another comment about four games from Aaron. With only four games left, we can now start to see some freshman play, not lose their red shirts. Who are the players we could see in that scenario? It's a good question. Um, TJ Crandall, I think at corner will play a lot. I think Jalen Gardner at safety is another freshman who you try and get on the field. Um, injuries especially will be interesting to see what happens there. It's, we haven't seen Hector on the field for a couple of weeks now. Who knows what's going to happen with, with Chiggy, but I think in the secondary, especially you're going to see a lot of guys get on the field defensively. I don't know. I mean, Kennedy McDowell would have been a guy that I would have thrown out there, obviously with his concussion situation. I, I imagine we don't see him for a while, if at all, for the rest of the year. Um, I'm trying to think about offensively who you might see more of, I guess, Damian Henderson, but again, maybe you decide to save his red shirt as well, just because at, at this stage of the season, we kind of are who we are. Uh, but th those would be my choices, especially on that defensive side would be just those guys in the secondary um, I think that's all the questions that we have. I appreciate everybody in here for tuning in on nine thirty at nine thirty in the morning. I know it's a snowy day. Maybe you had to get up and shovel your driveways and all that. It's it's a hassle with this wet, heavy snow. But I just want to remind everybody that the Rams are close. I really think they are. I know there are some people that roll their eyes when I say things like that, but I think they're close. They got to take care of business in some. Some key matchups. Uh, a couple more questions, I guess. Aaron Harris, I think Norvell is the guy, but the best game he has coached in Canvas was when he was with Nevada. That was a <laughs> that was a result of his time for his culture to take hold of the team. Couldn't have said it any better, bud. It takes time to establish that winning culture, especially when you've been a losing program for years on end. I mean, they came in to Canvas and they absolutely wiped the floor with CSU and they they beat the Rams down pretty bad in Reno under Bobo as well. It's going to take a process. You see that this team fights. You see that they don't lay down like we saw them do fairly consistently, you know, in like 2018, 2019, 2020, over and over and over again. They fight. They've been in every single one of these games outside of Washington State. They got to finish. They got to learn how to stop, you know, having these self inflicted wounds. They've got to learn how to put it all together for four quarters. That process takes time, but they will figure it out. They've got not to, and I think these coaching these coaches are the real deal. Uh, question from Matt: Will we see Muau this season? I kind of doubt it. Maybe late. I mean, you could play some of these guys over the last couple of weeks and still maintain their red shirt, especially if they didn't see the field early. But you've got Jordan Williams as well. You've got Vincent Brown. Williams is a guy who we'll see if he sticks around or not. His role has been drastically reduced this year, uh, but I I, I kind of it takes some time to develop at that that tight end position physically. Uh, you don't see a lot of true freshmen. I mean, even Trey as a true freshman didn't play a ton back in the day. It's just one of those that, that takes some time. And then even when you dominate in college and you go to the pro level, it takes some time to adjust to that as well. But uh, plenty to play for over this final month. Obviously, the attention now turns to Wyoming on a Friday night. You know, they're going to be favorites. But I, I do think that this is a winnable game. I really do. I think offensively, Wyoming is somewhat limited. They're tough. They're certainly going to test you. And if you have a bunch of self-inflicted mistakes, penalties, turnovers, stuff like that, could be a, a long night up in Laramie. But frankly, the Rams are due. They are due to return the favor because we have seen Wyoming you know, dance in Canvas Stadium, chant it sucks to be a CSU Ram, rub it in our faces year after year after year. And the one time that CSU in the last five years got to get that boot back, it was COVID and the stadium was empty and it just sucks. It felt hollow. It's time that the Rams returned the favor, went up into Laramie, punched them in the face, got the bronze spoon back, 
and bronze boot back and celebrated in their face. Um, got a question from Aaron. Is the Kia going to make it to Laramie? I don't know, but I'll find a way to make it to Laramie some way, somehow. Uh, whether I got a carpool with someone, I don't know. But the, the forecast actually looks pretty good. I cannot miss that one, though. It's all about the boot, baby. I, I love this rivalry. It's my favorite rivalry in college football. And I know that so much attention gets put on CU and, and even Air Force just because they're a top 20 team. But this is a team you've been playing since the late 1800s. This is a team that, you know, frankly, loves to, you know, come in and rain on your parade. They feel like Fort Collins looks down on Laramie and we're pretentious, you know, jerks. And honestly, at times, there are probably some interactions where CSU does get a little uppity with Wyoming fans, but that's all part of the rivalry. It's part of the fun. There's also a, a mutual respect between the two communities. It means so much to both of us. And I just, I want to see the Rams bring the fight. That's that's really what I would love to see. Win or lose, go down into Laramie and bring the fight. Stay warm, y'all. Hope that everybody uh, is able <laughs> to keep power and stuff. You always worry about that with these big snowstorms. And I uh, hope y'all are able to stay warm. Forever proud to be. Much love, y'all. Enjoy the rest of your Sundays. Peace. We all silly like the mayor. 